So you have pointed out to us that the BA.2 variant or subvariant of COVID is now what's called predominant. What does that mean and how are things looking here in North Texas? You know, that's a really good question, Chris. It is predominant. Uh, you know, I think roughly a week to two weeks ago, BA.2 was about 35 percent of the corona cases in the U.S. It's now right at 55 percent, so it is predominant. In the Northeast, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Vermont, those places, it's over 70 percent of the new cases. We're seeing it increase here in North Texas, but not as much as 70 percent. So is it possible that we do not see another COVID surge as a result of this subvariant? You know, I think there's two schools of thought. Uh, some think we could have another surge. I will say, though, the majority of the folks I talk to that specialize in infectious disease really think that we're going to have a spike, not a surge. And here in North Texas, looking at how BA.2 is growing, some are predicting a slight spike at the end of May, first part of June. We'll just have to wait and see. But I don't think we're going to see a surge the way we saw, say, about eight to ten weeks ago. Are the hospitalization numbers here in North Texas staying relatively steady? As a matter of fact, they continue to decrease, even though the overall Omicron BA.1, the original Omicron, seems to be decreasing. We do know the majority coming in of BA.2, the net net overall, we still have a decrease. Last night, we had 197 COVID-19 patients in trauma service area E. Chris, that's the lowest it's been since the beginning of the pandemic. That's only 1.4% of patients that we have in our beds. And only 14 of those were pediatric. So we're very blessed that our numbers continue to improve. Several pieces of good news there, and we can be thankful for that. So the CDC tells us that most Americans are now considered to be in low COVID transmission. To me, that sounds like that would be a good thing. What does that mean? You know, the low transmission, I think when they were referring to uh, the cases and the new cases, and then they look at things related to how is the R not factor? You want it to be at one or below. During the pandemic, you know, at the height of it, it could get up as high as 1.5, 1.6. It's running well below one. That's what they're referring to. I do want to point out, though, we want to take Omicron BA.2 seriously because the Danish ministry, when they had it in their country, said it was 30% more contagious than the original Omicron. So we still need to be careful. There is now a second booster shot available for a certain age group. What are the details here, and what are your experts telling you on who is recommended to get the second booster or fourth shot? Yeah, when, when I talk to the experts and especially the physicians, um, they want to follow pretty much what the guidelines were that came out from the CDC. Generally speaking, they're telling me if you're 65 and older, which is where we're seeing more of the cases, they recommend you get that fourth booster. As you know, the FDA said if you are 50 and older, you are eligible and they're saying if you have deficiencies related to your immune system, you clearly should get that fourth booster. My advice is if you have a personal provider or a personal care physician, consult with them, but make sure that you make a very informed decision. But generally speaking, if you're 65 and older, 
you probably should get that fourth booster. And considering that that particular dose is quite new, is it already readily available here in our area? It's my understanding it's very readily available. It's really, I think, best I can tell, and when I talk to the doctors, if it's Pfizer, for example, it's the same dose you got the first three times and the same with Moderna. 